Okay, this is Alan Albright. It's Brian Priest. We're here at the senior night for Spanish Fork High School against Provo. Last duel of the year. My two favorite schools. Yeah. This is where my <laughs> wife is a teacher. That's right, and she's a good one. Well, thanks. And this is kind of where I broke into my career as a head coach, Provo High. They'll be introducing the seniors here. Uh, Brian wrestled for me in high school and wrestled for me at BYU. Yeah, probably yeah. a little better in high school than I was at BYU. <laughs> well, and, a great, and a great coach. Yeah, we, we had some good times. Uh, I really, really, uh, really enjoyed, I really enjoyed Dak uh, wrestling under you, Alan. Well, thanks, you were a tough wrestler. Well, I think uh, today's kind of, I'm looking at the Provo lineup and they, uh, Lane Shepard gave to us and there's a lot of uh, crossing out and guys that are missing, so this could be a short duel me. I think Provo's forfeiting a couple weights at least. And, um, and that's kind of been the story a little bit. Yeah, they're, they may be switching guys thinking they'll do better against one kid or another, so they move them around. Yeah, they notice Provo has Hunter Williams out, and uh, Hunter's mainly the varsity guy, so they got Max Judd replacing him. And then to go without Josh Weeks, uh, who went to state last year and won a couple matches. Doesn't look like he's wrestling tonight. Either is Kel Cook. Well, Lane Shepard's out there. His boy's a senior. And yeah. Yeah, Lane's got an interesting life. He's got one son at Spanish and one at uh, Payson this year. Well, he lives in the Payson boundaries. and Yeah. <coughs> so Payson, I think they're wrestling Wasatch tonight. That's the big one uh, in uh, whatever region this is, region eight. Oh, that'll be a, that'll be a big one. You're right. Looks like Spanish Fork has a number of seniors. I'm not sure. Do they have a girl wrestling for Spanish Fork? I didn't know that. No, oh, I, I didn't know that either. Yeah, right over there in the end. <laughs> yeah, Provo had three or four this year. Um, but their best girls, uh, the Camacho sisters, transferred over to uh, Maple Mountain. So. so this is always nice senior night. Uh, Lane Shepard will be joining us on the mic in a second. Uh, Lane and Alan here, both uh, former head coaches here at Spanish Fork. In fact, you did it twice, right, or three times? Three times. Three times the head coach, three different tenures. Can you believe me? They hired me each time. It's <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I mean, you did uh, take them to their, you know, first state title way back in my senior year, actually. You left me to come down here. Yeah. To redder or greener pastures, as they say, right? Yeah, I remember you guys did win the 3A title when I was up at Skyline, and uh, we were 4A, but I remember you guys won it my senior year, 3A. Spanish Force first state title in wrestling. Yeah, and that was with UN and PG in it. Provo, it's been 50 years exactly. They, their only state title was won in 1970 by Joe Martinez. So it's uh, the 50 year anniversary of uh, Provo's only state title run. I know Lane won a couple state titles. Yeah. I think uh, for both of these teams this year, it might be some of the story is who's not wrestling versus wrestling. I think uh, Spanish Fork, I was talking to Kip, he had a lot of wrestlers not come back this year for a variety of reasons, move outs, transfers, and so forth. And well, Provo had a couple guys, a couple uh, state qualifiers uh, last year that quit the team or I'm not currently wrestling, so. That's a tough sport, and it's sad to see that, you know, especially when you build a program and then not see him come back. Yeah, especially, you know, when you expect them to kind of do some big things for you. So, um, 
They'll introduce the wrestlers now, I think. Looks like Spanish went back in the thing to come out and do their entrance, I guess. And yeah. I don't think, I know Provo's not in the tournament. I don't know if Spanish Fork is in a tournament. So this might be the last thing for a region. For now what we call divisionals, I guess. Well, you know, and, and going to a tournament at this point, you risk injury that you don't really want to do. Yeah, both teams were at the Rocky, uh, not, don't say the Rocky Mountain Rumble, they could get sued. The Rockwell Rumble, and that, that's a meat grinder. So I think uh, after that one, you're probably saying, hey, uh, let's be done. Yeah, like I said, uh, Alan, it looks like Provo's going to be short a few guys tonight, including Josh Weeks, who went to state last year and won two matches. Looks like he's not going tonight. Yeah, it looks like uh, they're going to be going out with, without Kel Cook, who's had a promising year. Um, it's the brother Rhett Cook who took third in state for Provo a couple of years back. So looks like Provo's a little shorthanded tonight. <laughs> well, it may be too, you know, they could be a little bit injured and you don't want to take a chance with region and state coming up. Yeah. yeah, it seems like most teams this time of year, they, they've just wrestled three weekends in a row and that's a lot of matches along with their dual meets. But it's, it's a big tournament, it's like the Rumble. <laughs> That's 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 a meat grinder. Yeah, it seems like the injuries start to surface this time of year. All that banging around they do. Yeah. So how's how's your how's your boy Dawson doing? Is he going tonight? Or? Yeah, he's wrestling tonight. He's uh, he's been winning some, losing some. He's wrestling pretty tough. That weight class is a pretty stacked up weight class. It's like a stacked up weight class in his own room. Yeah. Yeah, it With is. Wyatt Hone and the Wyatt. Yeah. Yeah. I like the robes. Yeah, I love those robes. Those are great. You know, back in the 70s, a lot of the Oklahoma teams wore, well, you know, Iowa State wore a robe. Oklahoma University of Oklahoma wore a robe. You know what the Provo look is? I just called this back, because this is kind of what they, Looked like uh, when I was coaching, and they <laughs> called themselves the Battlestar Galacticus. <laughs> they were a ragtag fugitive fleet. Yeah. And I hope, I hope the teams underestimated this by our warm up gear, you know? <laughs> Didn't I do robes one year in Skyline? Yes, you did. Yeah. You got those robes. I wish I'd have kept one myself. Well, that Spanish Fork used to have the gray robes, Al. Maybe you're the one that brought them around here. I did. That was a, we did like a karate. Top, you know. Yeah, these, these look pretty, pretty sharp. I, I, I think you can kind of tell Provo's got some JV guys in tonight just by the gear. Would you quit making excuses for Provo? <laughs> That's Not a good making sign. any excuses here. We we'll, we'll hope it's a good duel tonight. <laughs> That's a good sign for the Dons right now, though, for this duel meet. Yeah, I was hoping that Provo, like you said, they're missing like three guys, also Hunter Williams. I was hoping that they'd all be in there because I expected this to be a really good duel tonight. Well, how did, how come there's so many people out there? How many weights are there now? There's 14 weights. 14 weights, and we'll have a couple of four-foot matches tonight. We're gonna do some exhibitions, huh? A couple of exhibition matches. They're going to start at 160, huh? Yeah, 160, so I can't tell because Provo might be moving some guys around. It's either going to be Ammon Hill or Josh LeBaron. Ammon Hill, I think, is going to go for him at, uh, at 160 pounds. Okay. Josh LeBaron at 152. So usually varsity-wise, Provo has Josh Weeks at 152 and LeBaron at 160. But they could double up at region. You know, sometimes coaches will do. They've both gone 152. So, right. so well, in these dual matches, you know, you have to adjust your lineups to where you think you're going to where you think you're going to battle the best with the with the opposing team, where you just got yeah. one at each way. Exactly. And divisionals, uh, you know, you just want to get guys to stay in, in the best places. So 
It'll be interesting to see what Provo does there, for example, to double those boys up at 152. Or our last home duel. Spread and them out. Week, we begin so who are the captains out there for Spanish Fork? Uh, you have Brock Davis and uh, Dawson Shepard and Hunter Rasmussen and Clayton Norton. So the Provo's captains was Kyler Zarate. He's a two-time qualifier. Hunter Williams, who's in street clothes, he's usually 220. And big Jimmy Tomasi, the returning state champion for Provo. So this lost just one year, so. It's always good to have uh, those points in your back pocket when you're pretty well sure you got a placer there and probably a finalist and perhaps Jimmy might win his second state title. Right. You know, a lot of people wonder why they have to do a coin toss out there to start wrestling matches, but uh, they're that, not. that gives the team a choice on odd matches or even matches, which can be play into the strategy for the head coach on on who he's going to send out. Here he goes. And this is Ammon Hill for Provo. You're right. Whoever's odd or whoever's uh, choice it is, their guy has to present to the table first, right? Yeah. Nice pick. Lift the leg. Now go to the bottom leg. Nice shot by Brock Davis. Nice ankle pick. Yep. Brock's been wrestling solid for the Dons all year long. Senior and. I think he's going to go after it this year at the state tournament. Looks like he's got a little, got, a, got an arm Got the bar in. arm. Yeah, Put the Brock. weight on the head. Run it now. Run it now when he's coming up. Nope. Not enough pressure on the head. I expect Brock to be a placer, actually. He's uh, had a good year for the Dons. He has, and he's a hard worker in the room, too. Brock puts a lot of time in. And, and one of the leaders for this Spanish work dog dress link too. He's been trying to get that. He's got to gather that arm. And he's got to get his hip out. He's got to put there that in. It in there. Now, he's not putting enough weight with the hip. See, he's let his hips not do anything. Well, they got high. Give him got one, not two. Yep. Good job. Right there, he needed to just give one and not two. Now I'd say Ammon, you know, he, he's actually wrestled quite a bit of varsity for Provo. Um, I mean, technically, I think he's behind Joshua with LeBaron at one. A little snap and spin. Snap and spin him. But a pretty fair hand for Provo here. He's trying to set him up for an ankle pick. He can do the other leg ankle. Uh oh, be careful. Now, just Take turn him back. back. Oh, I hate that head and arm. <laughs> Nine out of ten times it doesn't work, right? Now if you know what you're doing, it won't. Or 95 out of 100 times. Right? But but if they get it one time, then they want to try it and try it and try it because you put the guy right on his back. Yeah, it's a good move to try with 15 seconds left in the third round versus 15 seconds left in the first round. So we're coming down to the end here, first round. And good round for Brock Davis. Scores 4-1. The score, four runs for Davis. I'll probably go down. I always notice probably to the first. <coughs> the taller guy will have the advantage in those throw situations. Brock's a little taller and he won the leverage battle on that throw situation pretty easily. Provo takes down. Let's see if Brock can. Pretty much back there. Again. Yeah. I was going to say if the guy wants to do that, you can put him right on his back. Well, looks like Brock got out of position a little bit going for the head and arm. And yeah, now the referee awards the escape. So we can see yeah, that. Yeah, take the two right there. And nice, nice work right on the edge there. Yeah, Yeah, they even changed the rule even more that you can score on, even kind of out of bounds, huh? Yeah, I, I, I like it. I think it's probably easier to officiate as a ref. Keeps the matches going, too. Yeah, and it, and it keeps the kids from trying to flee out on that, use that out of bounds line for a long time. They, they'd use that out of bounds line, you know, to avoid that takedown. Well, the problem with Provo and Spanish Fork wrestlers in the past is we like to wrestle in the center. And certain programs like to go to the edge all the time, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you at Oklahoma State, we teach them 
you know, you get to that edge, and then right when you get the edge, turn it around and have him there, yeah. you know. And then you would never shoot out. You'd always turn him in and then shoot in because if you shot out, you'd be out of bounds, you know. Yeah. But now things have kind of changed, and in the college, they're real liberal. If you got a fingernail in, you're in, you know. So yeah. That's kind of changed the strategy a little bit on that because you're right, Coach. You always wanted to put your back to the edge <laughs> and have the whole entire mat as your friend to score. Mm -hmm. Some of the matches I've watched of uh, Branson Ashworth on the college level, he'll have one foot in yeah. and his opposing guy's on his back, but he's almost off the mat on the hardwood floor, but it's still live action oh, even yeah. though he's off the mat. That's yeah, pretty crazy. The college man, they do try to make him a little bigger, the outside areas, but this is a beautiful mat, by the way. I'm trying to remember what college it was that there was a team that was maybe it was Arizona State known for playing the edge and everything else so they put a bunch of mats out and then drew a circle and everything and it was like the whole gym almost it was college <laughs> match oh, Brock's got another arm bar he's got to get that hip turned to do that he's got to get you don't think you do but you got to get that hip bone right into his armpit turn and then really put the pressure on the head well, definitely Davis came in as the favorite in this match, and I think if, if Ammon Hill could last the entire six minutes, that'd be a nice uh, victory in a sense for Provo, not to give up uh, bonus points if they could avoid it. Uh, Hill's being pretty sticky on the bottom and not giving up much. That's important on these dual meets to to avoid pins and. Now get the, oh, now see see how he didn't keep enough weight to the head and he almost flipped over. He's gonna run out of time, so in the second period, score six to two. Let's see, let's see what Davis. Hill does here. It looks like Hill might be bleeding and he is. Start flip time. Now back in the day, they didn't really care. You could bleed everywhere. <laughs> but uh, not anymore. If there's any visual sign of blood, they're stopped. Oh, they stop it immediately. Yeah, there's kind of, you know, bloodborne pathogen diseases. Kind of changed all that. Yeah, it used to be uh, pretty liberal. And you never stopped it for blood if there was a pinning situation, especially, or anything like that. Shout out to our trainer, Rory Eyring. He does a does a good job here at Spanish Fork uh, High School taking care of the athletes. He does do a good job. I guess Roger retired, huh? Yeah, yeah. a couple of years ago. Get that front headlock and then the ankle pick. Okay, so nice movement off the bottom for Brock. Davis is up five. He needs to try to get maybe up by eight to get that bonus. You know, he could do a snap and spin here if he would. Do. He's got a front headlock on. Uh, they're back to the back to the feet. He needs to score a takedown and either back points or let him go and take him down again to get a, a four point. You yeah, know, just like Hill would get up on his feet a little more from the Provo perspective. Yeah, that looks, like he, looks like he cranked on that front headlock long enough the hill was saying yeah just go behind yeah, yeah, just so get on around yeah. <laughs> get on around so what are we going to do here <laughs> if you're spanish you're going to cut him loose and try to get another takedown he should and they get a four, four point victory you know where they get 14 points rather than yeah he has way that guy's head on the mat he hasn't been too successful so far in turning him but yeah i think i might let him go right now Third period, sometimes they wear down and it's a little bit easier to get them on their back. Too. Yeah, just cut him right now. Yeah, somebody's gonna get worn for stalling or something. Uh, I don't know if they're saying Green's the home team. I don't Spanish know who Green is. <laughs> so uh, that's sometimes tricky. Some refs kind of are pretty. Uh, cradle him. Put a new near cradle on him rigid. if he wants to turn in. <laughs> Well, the rule book calls for home team to, to be, be green. green but yeah. So he might have warned us on top for staying parallel. I, that's, I think that he should have just let him go. Yeah, let's see if Hill, you know, is doing, doing a good job. Uh, he's not going to get turned, I don't think. 
Seven seconds. Uh, so it, it'll just be a regular decision, 9-2. One point more would have been at a, a major. Sometimes when you go to state and divisionals, you want to get those bonus points. I've seen state tournaments won by a half a point. Yeah, that can be big well, points. Well, I'll tell you in dual meets, you want, to, you want an extra yeah. point. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's still a nice win for the Dons. Start oh, yeah, good meet. win. Start the dual meet off three to nothing. So we've got Darren Euler versus uh, James Cox of Provo. Cox with a quick take there. Yeah, goes right in. Came to play. Euler, who's a sophomore here at Spanish Fork High School, football player, works. I can't let both those legs in. Now you gotta be ready. You shot a double last time, be ready. He's kind of going in with his head down. Yeah. Darren is the grandson of uh, longtime city manager Dave Euler. Okay. Oh, cool. Oh, for Spanish Fork. He's got a side carry almost. Keep it. Oh, he just not deep enough. That was close. Yeah. yeah what, what, what former wrestler of yours was really good at that move there, Alan? That side carry. Uh, <laughs> Glenn Tanner was good at it. <laughs> there we go. We'll go with that one. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, nice drag. Yeah. There's a move from the Allen Albright <laughs> straight book out of, right there. Straight out Don't. of the Allen Albright playbook there. Yeah, arm drag. Yeah, I liked how Cox came out aggressive from mm -hmm. Provo, and now I think he needs to get back after the shooting. It's all even now, even Steven. Oh. There's a oh, shot. Right deep there. shot. No, the don't give him the cradle. Oh, we could be yeah. in trouble there. I better belly out. Brace hard. You only got 20 seconds. You got to brace hard. No. Oh, no. Got to fight it tough here. Pins are huge in these dual meets. Yeah, yeah. just keep your arm up. From Cox might have had it for a second. He's not going to get it now, though. No, he's got too high on it. Yeah. <laughs> That's some big points for Provo. That's five point move. Okay, so that confirms when you see the red uh, armband go up, wristband go up, that is for Provo. Green is for uh, Spanish Fork. So the ref is being true to how you technically should call a match. So it was stalling the last period, of, um, I mean, last um, match on, on Spanish. Yeah. But I have seen it when their uniforms were green and red and changed, yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh-oh, well, he's we, got the bar arm. Well, the thing is. Uh, With a lot of time. Oh, grab the ankle. Grab the ankle, yeah. Put the leg in, put the gonna, leg in. It's be three for, uh, oh, we're going to have a potentially dangerous, going to bell Provo out perhaps here. Oh no! Yeah, that was a lucky call for uh, for Provo. It I think sure was. The reverse there. He's high again. Yeah, I don't know much about Cox to tell you the truth. He's been wrestling varsity. Get for the bottom leg. Um, if, if he can get this, he can sneak that bottom leg in. Taking his lumps and getting better, you know, one of those kind of kids. You got to shake that head out. There you go. We got a reversal for Euler. So, uh, I'm, this is one of those matches that could go either way. I don't even I, care what the score is. <laughs> I can see that. <laughs> I could tell you as a coach, you're coaching your uh, rear end off on this one, even if your guy's up six points. Yeah. Well, that's what Euler's got to do to come back. Just do it two here, two there. Oh, oh look at that! To lock, uh, could pin him here. Right oh, there, boy. he could. Oh, right. Ref better slap the mat there. He's starting to lose it. Get the knee in the side. Well, Come back three up. Three near fall. 11-8 is the score. So, 
Like I said, the Provo coaches are going to have to work hard to get this uh, uh, their guy through the match. Nice little side roll to create some action. Yeah, you got to be careful. <laughs> hip it up, hip it up. And this catch is a him crowd on the pleaser right here. You got to hip it up. You can still come out of this. Spanish Fork still in control. Yeah, just get a, a stalemate. Look at this. <laughs> well, oh, that time ran out. <laughs> <laughs> That's big because Provo didn't get a score there. Okay, we start the third period, 11 days for Provo. You can see both uh, Kip Spencer and Mike Olson are coaching hard on this one. Right hip up, oh, hip up. No. Just hip up, hip up. There you go. Oh. Keep the hip up. He almost got a count out of that. Yeah, he got one count. Well, it's going to be no count, but the Provo guy is, Fox is in trouble. He's flat. Uh-oh. Oh, see, now no. he got out of position to try to turn him. Ankle it, yeah. There right go. there, pull the ankle. Spanish fork is good at that move there, Alan. Yeah. Cross ankle off of the front headlock situation. I used to love the cross ankle. He's got to figure out how to get some back points, though. Yeah, it's been wild, but nobody scored in about a minute. We're coming down yeah. to <laughs> about a minute left in the. He's trying to lock up the last crater. round. Here got we go. Oh, no, but he doesn't, doesn't have, have it locked. Provo could come out on top here. Cox. Oh, my the goodness. There's the reversal. Now he's up five, but I, I still wouldn't feel too comfortable <laughs> if I was the Provo coaching staff. Because look, look at this. this. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy. You got to get three here. Down to a three see point what, match again. We'll see who's been working harder in the wrestling room. Yeah, they're both fatiguing now. Cradle it, cradle it. Oh boy. <laughs> Look at the wrestlers from both pitches. They're, <laughs> they're excited. Well, maybe more so Spanish for it. <laughs> yeah, getting high, getting high. There we go. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Well, looks like Cox is going to win this one. Good effort by Cox of Provo. We're down with under five, and that's going to be, as my dad would say, Katie bar the door. Yeah. <laughs> Very tight match there. Ooh, duels tied up at three. Yeah, so I don't know if people know, but Brian's dad was one of the premier coaches in the state of Utah. and. Uh, Actually, the nation at that time and at Uena High School. Yeah, hopefully some of it passed off to me a little bit. Certainly yeah. my sister. It did. She's won a few state titles in volleyball. Well, in 182 pounds here, we have senior Brandon Cabrero. Looks like Jesse Watson, a sophomore. I think he's a first-year kid for Provo, so. Pretty, pretty stocky-looking kid. Well, we got two first-year uh, wrestlers going at it here now. Anybody. So that could happen either way, too, yeah. huh? Uh, these kids are athletic. They look like they got, uh, you know, they look like they're well-built. Oh, I'm trying to get that headlock. Cabrero stays in good position there in front to avoid that headlock. Yeah, you got to be careful because that's what he, you know, that's what he's hunting there. So this is kind of an interesting duel to me. I, and I think if teams are both full strengths, uh, kind of Spanish Fork and Provo are kind of stronger in the same areas, you know, kind of through the middle weights. Um, of course, uh, you know, you got Tomasi on top for Provo, and, and Hunter Williams has done a pretty good job. But, uh, so this could be a this could be an important match here. Yeah. Both of them are just battling position, it looks like. You know, uh, Spanish Forks heavyweight Jaden Green's done a good job this year. Yeah, Jaden's been pretty solid for the Dons all year. He's a, he's a good athlete. So, you know, if you wrestle somebody that's better than you, 
What you want to do is keep it as close as you can for as long as you can, because sometimes they'll get frustrated and do something they shouldn't. Yeah. Remember when I had old Kyle Wilson wrestling that kid from uh, Taylorsville? Murray, was it? The Davies oh, kid? No, not Davies. Oh, oh. Oh, other, uh, uh, Ruiz. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wasn't That's, he on the Olympics? And yeah, yeah, yeah. Greco? Yeah. But I know the Murray kid was tough, too. Yeah, he was. We beat him. We, uh, we actually yeah. lost by a point we have some in overtime to Ruiz, but... If I recall, Al, I think the referee to that match was the workout partner for Ruiz, yeah. too. Which, could, which cost us that match, in my opinion. I remember Kyle, he was tough. I had a pretty good 189-pounder uh, for Provo, Matt Dehanens. I think Kyle won it that year, and Matt took fourth. So, Cabrera puts a lot of pressure on him on the top there. Well, he probably had to wrestle the Murray kid, didn't he? Uh, Kyle beat the Murray kid yeah, in the semis. Yeah, we wrestled him for third and fourth, <laughs> and he was mad. He was returning state champ. Yeah, he was kind of, well, here we go. Oh, look at that, pull him on. Well, I guess you don't have to pull him on, do you? No, but you can't. You got to be sure you all the supporting points to go out of bounds. Yeah. I don't think he stays right where he's at. Yeah, he could. There's a lot of time left in this round. Yeah, you could pin him off off the mat. And he just did. He just did. <laughs> uh -oh. Again, in these dual meets, pins are so huge because you get that six point score instead of three. I don't know. Coach Olson's kind of upset about something for Provo. Well, he's probably saying his positioning. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know the rule anymore, so. Well, based on what I know from the new rule, that was a legal pin. And he explained it to Mike, and Mike didn't really. Yeah, he didn't question it at all, so. Possibly thought that his knee, uh, that his knee was a supporting point. Yeah. Where his knee was down outside. Hunter so Rasmussen gets a four foot here. Yeah, so we're now at 220, and uh, this is a JV guy for Provo. Their, their regular man, Hunter Williams, uh, is out tonight. And he gets Matt Smith. Strong kid, solid wrestler. Might get another pin off the mat, <laughs> I don't know. Good, Matt's been out a lot this uh, season with injury, so it's nice to see him back out on the mat. Yeah, I know, you know, Kip was really high on him. Like I said, I think Provo's missing too many guys tonight for this to be a, a competitive duel in all likelihood. Not what I'd hoped when I drove over. <laughs> <laughs> Well, but, you, but you can't be missing three varsity guys. You know, Spanish is a solid team. And well, a lot of duels, you can't miss anybody. Yeah. Yeah, I figured, you know, Provo had a fighting chance, that, you know, if they had everybody in. Well, this could be a big, uh, this could be a big win for the Dons here if Matt now, can get a pin. Do they have a region tournament anymore or just go not, regionals? Not really. They go to divisionals. Divisional. And actually, Spanish Fork and Provo are in the same divisional at Wasatch. Lane, you can't get a uh, place for Dawson and uh, Lane Jr. at the same tournament, can you? No. Another pin off the mat. Another yeah. six points for the Dawson. Now, what that really does, so it really hurts because that's like winning two matches, you know, when these tight ones. So we're getting three pins in a row. That's yeah. like winning six matches. Yeah. You know, what Caden could do, you know, Caden's a good man for Spanish. You know, it'd be big if he went the distance with Tomasi, you know? Yeah. That'd, be, that'd be a good confidence builder for him, too, for Jaden. But Tomasi here from Provo is the returning state champion. Um, and he, he beat, looks like it. Yeah, he beat Ryan Gunn of Box Elder. Gunn had beat him uh, at the divisionals the week before, and Tomasi turned the tables at state. And Tomasi's other loss last year was to Sam Dobbs, Spanish Fork. You know, Sam had a great year, took second in 4A, right? Yes. So that, that was, uh, I think, uh, Jimmy's two losses last year. One of the key things for Jaden here is to just stay in good position and not, not open up a lot. Because yeah. Tomasi's. 
quite athletic for, yeah, for he, a guy that size. He does have shots like that. Oh, nice shot. He may not make it out of that. Get yourself, yeah, good job. That's good how job. Tomasi won the match uh, with a gun last year at State. He hit a high crotch, changed up to a double. Incredible lift, if you remember that, just lifting him up in the air and put him down. And then um, he rode him for a bit and then cut him loose and then won the match three to two. But Jimmy has shots. Oh, how about wow. that little roll there? It's Too like, bad hey. they didn't let that keep wrestling on that side of the mat. <laughs> In college, they would have. That one's for. That one was a good call. Though. He's going to have him look, let him up. Come on, Fred, come on! These guys are testaments. Like, why don't you, as a football player, wrestle? I think. I don't know how Caden did in football. Jimmy's been all state for three years. So I think wrestling helps. I read it. Oh, definitely. Read an interesting article by the Clemson head coach saying that he uh, he looks for the the wrestlers out of high school when he's on the recruiting uh, when he's on the recruiting trips. Yeah. No, nope, we're in trouble here. Thirty seconds left. You know he's using his hips well. You can see that he really didn't turn him much with the arms as he did by the power in his hips. Well, Jimmy's real solid, you know, I mean, great athlete. Is he a football player? He's I mean, is he, gonna, player. is he gonna go to? Yeah, that's what he wants to do is play, play college. I'm not sure where he's signed yet. You know, he's actually had to work hard to get down to the 285. Wow. Not so much this year, but the last two years, he missed about half the season getting his weight down. So he actually, Came in this year, maybe only missed the, the first uh, week or so before he was down to weight. And we have a next cradle. Game. This could be over quick. So I don't know. I guess Provo got the team points. Ten seconds. So Provo won the match by forfeit. This was an exhibition match. Okay. I didn't think Spanish had a forfeit. Yeah. So that was a. Uh, um, Spencer Verdun. So I'm just going based on what the team score yeah, is. Yeah. So I can see that, but I didn't know. And the Spanish Ford guy looked a lot bigger. <laughs> he probably is. He's a senior, so they probably uh, wanted to give him a, a shot man. out yeah, there. Get him the a match. Yeah. So there was a forfeit there. Tate Swords, then, who's been solid for the Dolls all year, He's got a forfeit. Yeah, so now we got Cal Morris versus Bridger Warren. Uh, Bridger's uh, dad works at Spanish, right, or is it Salem? Uh, no, Br uh, Bridger's dad is uh, Brad Warren, who's right. the science teacher here at Spanish Yeah, Park yeah, High yeah, that's right. His one boy wrestled at Salem, right? Yes, they live in Salem. Yeah. He decided to come over to the good side. That's good. Go to school with his dad. Well, yeah. I, I talked, I, I talked to Bruce. Warren in the wrestling many years ago, and then his brothers followed suit. So, Bridgers, uh, yeah, Cal's had a kick out of that. Cal's yeah. had a pretty nice year for Provo. Um, I'm, I'm not, I don't think he went to state last year, but he does have some experience. Good job of Bridger fighting off his back there. Yeah, Good job of bridging, huh? Yeah, <laughs> that's always, uh, you know, big, you know, you got. Two wrestlers probably more on the lesser experience side. Anything can happen. Fight off your back one time, you might get the guy on the back next time. Bridger's one of them kind of wrestlers that doesn't quit, too. I mean, he can get scored on, and he's still Oh, don't battle. let him pull your arm in. And why he said that about Cal is he maybe went to state last year, and I... I think so he if I, if I, for yeah, if, if I made that mistake, Cal, I apologize. But I know, you know, he does a pretty good job for the Bulldogs. I'm pretty sure he you did got, qualify. Get your state. hand on hook, come up. Just keep coming up. Bridger's a sophomore here. Spanish <laughs> Fork High School. I'm not sure what Cal is. He's either a sophomore or a junior. I know he's not a senior, but. 
And they go out of bounds, 5-0. 28 seconds left in the first period. Be nice for Bridger to score one or two here right at the end of this round. What wasn't he doing? His knee wasn't behind or what? Yeah, not, yeah, I think he got on him a little bit too far forward. This official's familiar, but I don't know his name. Let's go over. You gotta keep scooting, keep scooting, keep scooting, keep scooting. Scoot and get that hip up. No, nah, he's gonna get caught in the bottom leg. He, he's gotta keep scooting. I love that bottom leg cradle. Yeah, that's a deadly. Yeah. What uh, Cal did nicely, though, is he did lower his hips, his level, so Bridger could not complete the switch. Uh huh. You know, he countered that pretty decently. He got out of position with his head down to allow Bridger the opportunity, but then he did counter pretty well, decently. Bridger's got to hit that a little bit quicker instead of just trying to reach back and reach into that switch. Yeah. You got to. You got to really sit out hard and hit it. Bridger's choice, and he defers. Could have him go neutral. That's that's interesting. You know, I I would make my guys always go down, even if I didn't do it at the state tournament. You wanted to get the guys the experience yeah. of one point can make a big difference. That's how we beat the Murray kid, and that's how we beat. A lot of people. Yeah. Nice, nice little shuck by, but now, the devil's advocate in me is like maybe by this stage of the season you might know how your wrestler wrestles and you might know something about your competition. I don't know, but but generally I kind of like your philosophy, especially. Well, with a sophomore, I don't think he's going to be a terror on. The, it's sneak like that arm Cal through. has the advantage on the neutral sneak position. that arm through don't put it over his head put it underneath his head so you can flatten out see as long as he keeps that arm no no oh Ooh, nice good move. would have been nice <laughs> he was trying yeah. to get a little switcheroo little duck kind of a duck under from bottom yeah one thing more you know I, I just would suggest is like you just need to be a little bit Smarter on the edge there. You know. Yeah, Bridger played the edge real good there. Yeah. Um, now That's he's it. Coming up. Hips out. There you go. Oh, the one. Bridger's coming right back at him. You're right. He don't quit. Oh, you got to set that shot up yep. better. You got to. He... Nope, nope, nope. Now if you can come up with it. Now come up. Come up, push one one off. Push one off. There you go. Now come get your head around your bottom leg this. Ooh, we could end up in a good position here. He can get that head. Uh, 15 now get your hip. No, oh, bro. No, 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 Don't no, stop no. it there. Oh, still me? That's kind of a rough call. <laughs> I'm a, you know. He's, he's going to say it was representing my promo dangerous. guys. Uh, you know, I guess that was a lucky, uh, fortunate call. Yeah. Very fortunate. I think we'd ended up with five there. Uh, now Spanish is going to be uh, warned for caution. That's two style. cautions. He can't can't get another one, or it's a point, isn't it? That's a second caution. Yeah, that's a second caution. You're right about Bridger, though. He, you can tell he's battling out there. He's Get your head inside that arm. He works hard in the room. He's in good enough shape. He can wrestle hard six minutes. Yeah. Back so last year, he was the, got an award for the hardest worker on his team. Yeah, so, he, lo he looks a little more fresher than uh, you know, Cal does right now. Well, let's see. Now he's on top. Let's see what he does. And I would, that's a wise decision. Go ahead and you're behind 7-1. Go ahead go on top. Yeah. Nice Cradle it. Tilt. Oh, wow, well, he's and got he's the got tilt it. guy working for him. Oh, he had it. Might have been close right. to a two count. Referee was a little bit out of position. Oh, look there at this. Can get it. Count it. Oh, oh, we could get a pin right oh, here. Oh, wow. We're going to get a pin right here. Drop that hip on him. Get on your toes.
Well, we might know why Morris didn't go down. Yeah. Now reverse the head. Oh, we got a lot of time here. A minute 15. Well, now he lost it. Face him, face him. Uh, Morris was three points. Points scored and he did give uh, Provo um, Morris the reversal. So Warren got the near fall. And the 3 2 exchange is all that was in the in run. Yeah, we could. I thought we might get a pin right there, but. Now he's got that guy wore out. He's going to take uh, Coach Olsen's A little air break. It's called the red lung. Yeah, it's where the lungs hurt. Well, I think Warren might have gotten his head right there, though. Yeah, he got might have got a wind, the wind knocked out of him a little bit. But, you know, this is a. I think he got the <laughs> wind run out of him, you know, worked out of him. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's part of the game, you know. I, See, this is what Arizona State used to do all the time, used to make me mad. They'd get tired and they'd, they'd fake an injury. I'm not, not saying he's faking it, I'm just saying yeah. they would fake an injury. Yeah. They were they were notorious for That uh, used to frustrate me as a coach too when you'd get to the state tournament and then all of a sudden one of your opposing guys you've wrestled all year long has to have an inhaler. They have to, <laughs> they all of a sudden have to have an inhaler out there. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know who you're talking about there. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, odd words. Trying to set up maybe a little Grammy or something, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, good there, move. Now he's got to take him to his back 30 seconds. Here's where Morris just keeps his hips down while trying to control the ankle. and uh, hit him for stalling. Yeah, I don't know if that's going to. Now you blow out that out. Now you blow that out. Blow that off the mat there. There's nothing going to happen there. No, I, I think they're still on there. What are you talking about? No. <laughs> <laughs> you see, that's where your Provo, you, you try to keep the mat, keep the action on the mat, right? Don't do oh, that. No, I knew just, he was going to do it. Yeah, that's, I think that's number three, and you're right. That's. So here's the thing. Well, the referee's got to blow his whistle. Why is he hesitating there? Both of them are ready. They're in the Yeah, center. I know. Yeah, he's taking his time calling that, too. So, so it's going to cost him a point. So this really means that if Bridger throws Morris to his back, he could really only tie up the match. But that's not going to happen. Hip up. And now it's pretty much over with yeah yeah, yeah. Was, any any uh throwing maneuver less than five seconds can only get four points unless you don't start the clock yeah <laughs> spanish fork they were kind of known for that <laughs> okay he didn't start the clock okay so winner by decision count morris control. warren got a stall point but it didn't matter 10-6 so that's going to make it 27-18 on the team score. Good yeah. match, entertaining. That one's he's a goer. He keeps going. Yeah, he's going to be a tough here. one. Okay, who do we got here? We got that uh, Procopu now at 126 pounds. Okay, this is Logan Corliss of Provo. Again, a guy who probably was close to going to state or went to state. Procopu's got him picked up. Nice takedown. Trying see. to bar that arm up. I think actually Provo's missing another guy. Normally they'd have Gabe Wolf at this weight. Gabe's a state qualifier. So he might right. chicken out. Uh, <laughs> I doubt that. I just think, you know, like you said, you're going through that rumble. Guys are banged up, you know. Well, both Provo and Spanish beat Springville by pretty similar scores. So, yeah, like I said, I came over tonight expected a pretty close duel. 
This could be a very close duel. He's got the bar arm. Can he get it on the head? He got on the head. Oh, we're going to get a pin here. Especially the way the guy's fighting it, yeah. Man, that's a big pin for Spanish Fork right there. That's 33. Always say this is a race to 42. If you get to 42, you can't lose. <laughs> um, all right. Clay Orton, huh, for Spanish? Kyler Zarate. Clay okay. Orton is an interesting wrestler to watch. He's been winning a lot for the Dons. He's got such an unconventional style of wrestling that it just really surprises other opponents. They get in deep on a shot and think they got him, and the next thing they know, he scored on them, putting them on their back. Yeah. Nice, and nice. Offense there. Uh, Kyler Zarate, I, I remember he qualified for state as a freshman a couple years back. And what was weird about that, that was when the divisional um, tournaments were up at the Legacy Center. And they were using nine mats, and then all of a sudden the round ended, and they were on 18 mats. And I was just started kind of helping run the tournament, and I had to go coach his match. Was, they were they using 18 mats, and oh, Provo nice. had six guys on the mat. Nice <laughs> the run time. around. And uh, Kyler was down five points and threw, made a throw, and went to state. Clay's going to practice takedowns uh, here. I guess. Uh, last week he was uh, just one match away from placing. Place, I know he's, Orton's had a really good year. Well, he's a, he take second at the showdown, I think. Smooth, smooth wrestler. He's one of them wrestlers you call scrappy. Yeah. Ooh, knee tap. He's trying to hit that knee tap. Be careful. Oh. You gotta lock it in, lock it in, hook it in. There you go. Hook your other leg in. Clay gets no, in don't bring it. You never let him get over top of your hips. You gotta hip up now. No, we're grabbing now. Yeah, see, he needed to hip up there, and that was a mistake. As I said, Zarate's not, uh, not bad. Good wrestler. Yeah, you have two good wrestlers out there in this match. Clay does a good job getting off his back. No, he's six six. Six actually. six. You can never let your hips be flat on the mat. When you let your hips on the mat, the other guy can score on you. You bring those hips up, he would have never got the rear behind him. It might be eight six, because that's a five point move. I think like you know with. Uh, uh, we might be down eight six. Down eight six. Well, Zarati gets in a lot of high scoring matches. You know, this is a pretty typical match for Kyler. <laughs> it is eight six for Zarate. Yeah, that, that had to be because we were ahead six three and then he got a Two five a point three. move. Yeah. Seems like Clay Orton's matches are always a pretty high scoring, scoring match too. too. So we're gonna be a in double digits is what we're saying. <laughs> He's working for that arm bar. He's got it. Got to go to the head. You got to get that head. Tell you, Spanish is really good with that arm bar. Oh, wow. Look at that. Bar nice. Half. Got it. We could get a fall. My dad now would be proud in on it. Settle in on it. Come back. Come back. Bring your hips back. We got a lot of time left in this round. Clay's in good position yeah. here. Yeah. He gets the fall. 39. Another win. It's over, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I think we got Deshaun Lee for Provo versus your boy here, Dwayne, right? Yeah, Dawson's uh, senior here at Spanish Fork High School. Deshaun has some experience. Uh, they put him in the JV Rumble last week, and he placed. So. Nice. Pull that leg up. Nice. Bottom leg. Can keep it. Keep it. Keep it. Cradle it. Cradle it. He's got the bottom leg cradle. Oh wow! Dawson awesome. came to play. Just take your time. 
Just take your time. That's a tough cradle to get out of. Just he take he your doesn't time. have it locked, but he's got nope. the leg nice, though. They did have it. He's going to get nice two. Cut. Two point air ball. Going for a tilt, and he's getting it. So basically, uh, uh, I mean, I don't know. I think Spanish has probably clinched the duel, but they do win this one. It's mathematically over for sure. Because <laughs> uh, Provo's won a match by decision, so they can't get any more. Well, I tell you, the pins make a big difference in our forfeits, too. This 138 pound weight class will be interesting at the That switch to the bottom leg again. Oh, I could have done it on the way down. Dawson's showing he's serious about winning on senior night. Sure, his mom and pop are here. Yeah, I've been real impressed with Shepard this year. Not just because his dad could beat me up right now, but he's <laughs> had a good year. Yeah, he's beat some good kids and hopefully he'll finish out well, play since at stake for the dogs. Yeah. Don't get so high. Good job. He's got some back points. He might that end could this. Be tough there. There it is. Well, that's 45 to 18. So Put Spanish Put that the arm door. In and yeah. Quicker than two shakes of a lamb tail. The ref slapping the mat there, Brian. Yeah. Deshaun <laughs> kind of has a hurt shoulder, so we hope he's okay. <laughs> two shakes of a yeah. lamb tail. Deshaun, he's the kind of guy he could has an outside shot at going to state for Provo, so let's hope the uh, that's not too serious. He gets back going. Oh, there was another forfeit. So yeah, that didn't matter. Yeah, it's the Provo. They're missing Kel Cook. And this is the final match of the evening. Yeah, so that wasn't going to matter anyway. It looks like Spanish. Spanish is going to come out with a real nice win. That's always fun when you beat Provo. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> now, what you want to do is pinch his elbows in. No, the guy's getting it high. So LeBaron here, he's a state qualifier. I think he won a match last year. Um, he can go 152 or 160. Yeah, it looks like Provo. he's pretty solid. Uh, Isaac Wetzel has been pretty solid this yeah. year for the dogs. Straighten your leg, yep. He's a younger wrestler. So what Provo does is they usually have Josh Weeks, who didn't wrestle tonight, go 50, and LeBaron usually goes 60. And then you got Ammon Hill there. Three pretty solid wrestlers for the Bulldogs, kind of fighting in for two spots. Well, that's nice about that JV thing. Do they still score the JV at the state tournament? Uh, for 5A, 6A, I think for 4A they do as well. But the smaller classifications, they allow JV wrestlers to go, but they only uh, score one guy per way. Which is probably the way to go, for at least for the smaller classification. I remember when they first decided to do that, it was... Uh, <coughs> It was to Pleasant Grove's advantage, and and uh, Al Albright says, "Okay, yeah, it'll be to your advantage this year, and next year it'll be to ours." And it was to Spanish Sports' <laughs> advantage after that. Yeah, having a deep program. Well, I'm going to tell you something that's really weird: is the um, 1997, um, you know, PG and Provo had JV guys make the state finals, right? So. Um, and then that's the air. I think. No, you're high. You can't do uh, that. The year the Jasper won, beat Blaine. Yeah, the the PG. And then the weight below, uh, Patrick Porter wrestled uh, Robert Musto. My two guys wrestled for the state title. Um, well, that has something to say for having good wrestling partners in the room. When you're working out with the best in the state, then. You have proved to be one of the best in the state also. Yeah, and I, you know, Payson, they could very well have, uh, you know, Lane Jr. and uh, Hone, Austin Hone in the championship final. Bar that, that that's and a run possibility. it. Wetzel could get a, could run this bar arm here, turn this match around. He went ahead three to two. He's got to get that arm. Don't let his hips up. 
I think he might try to do that tilt. Oh. Uh, sometimes that tilt makes me nervous. There he's got it. Yeah, he's gonna now get he's... some points. I realize, yep. Did he get the five counts? I or? don't know if he did or not. He got three, yes yeah. he did. You can do it from standing and I tell too. you, this is where momentum in a dual meet really pays off. Spanish Fork has a lot of it right now. And Provo doesn't have any. <laughs> and you know, and I think Josh is battling that. I, I mean, I normally would think uh, LeBaron would win this match, but ankle. Um, Come back up. It's senior night at Spanish Fork, and yeah, he needs to not stay there. Come back up and don't get your head to your knee. Let's yeah, switch to two. Right up, Take it the other way, other way, other way. Yeah, come out this other way. Josh is kind of real funky on his feet. <laughs> um, no, 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 no. Don't give it up. Give it up. Hip oh, it, hip it, hip it. Oh, he so gave him two. Now the ref's mixing up his hand signals. 6-5. It's going Provo Green now. Hopefully got an experienced table down there. They figured it out. Got to come out now. Hips out, hips out, come out. There you go. That was an important point there. Tie the matchup or takes up by two. Yeah, nothing foolish here with seven seconds left. Yeah, this is going to come down to the wire, I think. Good match. Yeah, nice round by Wetzel there. Yeah, he's wrestled real tough. Uh, 11th grader, junior. Well, Barron's a senior. So this well, this is, is still anybody's ball game, really. For the third and final period. This guy's waiting too long. He hit the bottom guy, though. Yeah, LeBaron, he's giving up that wrist, and that's not good. <laughs> no, and Wetzel's taking full advantage of it. Big Spanish, they've been the tougher team on top tonight, for sure. I think, you know, just generally my observation is, you know, Provo's hung pretty decent on the feet, but on the mat, Spanish Forks had the huge advantage. Well, you know, I've always felt when I've come here to coach, kids are always good on the mat. Yeah. And I just work with them on their feet, get them, yeah. and, and they just had a natural thing. They were always good on the mat. That's Spanish. Right? That's Spanish. And a lot of that probably attributes back to a strong little league program that we have yeah. here at Spanish Fort teaching them basics for sure well I came to pro well they didn't have the little league program that the Spanish Fort has so kind of stressed uh, getting pretty good on your feet <laughs> and, um, nice take down there but that was yeah. a good takedown by the, Spanish the, sure. the, the one thing I did have that taught your dad a lesson. He kept wanting me to wrestle you JV when you were a sophomore, and I said, no, he's gonna get beat, and he's gonna learn how to wrestle, and you really never got beat much, and yeah. placed in state. Yeah, yeah he's, got, he's got near fall again Yeah, here. good, this is a, That's this score great. holds up. This is a real nice win for Wetzel. Is, LeBaron is a good wrestler. You know, in a win like this, can get in your opponent's head knowing that you're going to maybe face this guy to get in the state tournament. Good well, job with the hips. Keep it. In about eight days, the divisional. Potentially dangerous? Might turn him? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe he got up onto a chicken wing. Well, wings. it's all right. I don't want anybody getting injured here. But chicken wings are illegal, not. Eight days before state here, or divisional. Okay, you gotta be careful here. Good and smart, not trying to. Yeah, now just. Yeah. 
Waste eight Take seconds the win. There. Keep your head up. Don't reach oh. back. <laughs> Well, and don't put like your head to your knee either. Wetzel's going to win it. 54 to 18. Very uh, good win for Spanish Fork on senior night. Yeah, nice, nice win going into the regionals. You know, Spanish Fork wrestled well. You know, Provo didn't have enough, uh, you know, bullets in their gun tonight with all the injuries and whatnot. And Spanish Fork came to play, did a real nice job. They wanted to go out and win one for the seniors, and they did. Yeah, nice, nice work. Way to, nice way to end the dual meets. Yeah. Uh, the year on a dual meet. Congratulations to Kip Spencer, and uh, we want to thank Spanish Fork 17 for covering this, and they've, they've covered several matches this year, and that's good exposure. Yeah, I think, the, you know, before we, you know, cut loose, is I think both teams would love to get in the top ten at state. I think it's a doable goal for both, both programs, you know. Spanish Fork has, I think, several wrestlers that could place in state. You know, Provo has two or three good chances, I think. And, of course, Tomasi uh, should make the finals at least. Well, it'll be interesting to see. All right. There'll be a lot of wrestling left to do. All right. See you guys later. All right.